so there is an alternative title, which is Why Waste Time Say Lot Work When Few Work Do Trick? Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's just dive right in. What is a Boolean Satisfiability Solver? Um, a Satisfiability Solver, a Boolean Satisfiability Solver will take a Boolean expression like A and B, uh, and it will give you a uh, scenario by which that uh, expression may be uh, solved, may be true, right? So in this case, we're saying solve the expression A and B, and it says, okay, that expression is true if A is true and B is true. And this is an example we say A and not A, and that comes back and that says that's unsatisfiable. There is no situation where A is and not A is true. Looking at an example like this, we have uh, A uh, and <laughs> A and a or B, or not A and B, right? This is just an example of how you can make arbitrarily nested Boolean expressions with arbitrarily number of variables, and you can solve for them, and this one says, well, that one var one solution for that is uh, A is true and B is false. <coughs> oh, I didn't have an image of what I was talking about. All right, so let's talk about how we can use it. Um, Yeah, so this, what this does, this actually gives us all scenarios by which it's true. The, the simple way that you do that is you pass in the first, uh, you pass in uh, your thing, you get one solution from the sat solver, um, and then you say, well, what if that's not true? You negate that, the, the solution that it gave you, and it's gonna give you another one. And you do that until it says there's no way, there's nothing left, there's no solution. And then you have the entire list of all scenarios by which your expression could uh, be true. Um, and you can see this is a good example where if I say A or B, there are three scenarios where A is true and B is false, A is false and B is true, and they're both true. Those are all scenarios by which this uh, expression could be true. So uh, if anybody familiar with truth tables, this is essentially a way to produce a truth table for an expression. So what I'm going to talk about is how uh, we use this Nash framework to solve for policies. This is pseudocode, this is, what, or this is you know, like little example code, it's a little bit more complex over the hood. But you can see how what we can do is given a set of facts, like values for A and B, like that A is actually true and B is actually false, we can run this code and then we can say, well, are any of these scenarios true? Are they actually the true scenario? And so you can see in the examples on the right over here that given those facts, we can say, uh, if you had a policy, like you can do this action, if these things are true, you can say, are any of them true or are any of them false? And this can be really useful for different kinds of logic. Okay. I gotta go fast. So let's talk about policy-based filtering. If for you were doing like queries, what you could do instead of say, is this true or false, is you could use these scenarios to make a SQL filter, right? Or a, a, a filter of some kind that, that, only, that limits all the data that you see to only what you have access to. And this is what Ash Framework does for read requests. So let's talk about procedural code to uh, Boolean expressions. This is what a policy looks like in Ash Framework, and it's read from top to bottom as if it were procedural. So every policy that applies, um, you know, going from top to bottom, a bypass will bypass any following policies if that policy passes. So a good example is like a super admin override. You put a bypass up the top, so super admins can do this. And that's what you see here. But what we do is we translate this into a Boolean expression. So I'll show some comments here. This, a bypass translates to or condition of the bypass and then the rest of the statement. The policy says either the condition is not true, so this is not a read action, um, or it is a read action and the contents of this policy is true. And we do this for all of the rest of it to produce our Boolean statement that we're gonna pass to the satisfiability solver. And you can see it looks like this, that's pretty ugly, but under the hood, it actually looks like a pretty standard statement that you might make writing authorization code. But what we can do with this is this can so the SAT solver can solve arbitrarily complex uh, large expressions, and we can use that to provide excellent breakdowns for why your authorization failed, things like that. And there's a lot more, but I'm out of time. So uh, five seconds, twenty seconds. Okay, uh, we can do some other things like we can use this SAT solver to translate. Uh, filter statements into Boolean statements, and then we can determine whether or not one query produces a subset of the data of another query, which is great for caching or testing, things like that. And you can find us uh, on Ash HQ on the website and the Discord.